Hello, welcome to this video, the third in the series, here's the execution plan, now what? In all of these three videos, I basically do the same thing, I try to bridge the gap between the theory of execution plans as it is often taught, uh, taught in courses or in classrooms or in, used in blog posts to illustrate stuff. Whenever we try as teachers to illustrate something, we use a simple execution plan that illustrates the issue without anything to distract you. But reality isn't simple. Reality has messy, large execution plans that are full of distractors and you still have to find your way around it. So in all of these three videos, what I do is take somewhat more realistic scenarios of medium complexity, not the highest complexity, but a step up from those simplified classroom examples. And I will show you how you can use um, uh, execution plans and various other tools to fix various performance issues in such cases. I already have two videos up and in the uh, description below you will find links to those two where I talk about a, a case with excessive IO and where I fixed a case with high resource semaphore weights. In this third and for now final video of this series, I will look at an example of erratic query performance. So let's just jump right into the demo and see what we have to do today. So let's make sure we are in the correct database first. And when we are, the problem we have is with a store procedure called find orders, which is used uh, when, custom, when our users enter various information in a search screen to find the orders um, that they need to work on. This is a very flexible store procedure. It has a bunch of parameters. They are optional, so we can supply whatever we need and it will search for those cases. And in this case, uh, I will start by looking in uh, the query store. Query store is a very useful tool. It is an a uh, available in the product since SQL Server 2016. And if you haven't enabled it for your databases, then why not? It has very limited overhead and it gives you a bunch of uh, options to get data. In this case, I'm going to look at the top resource consuming queries report. And we see that in this case, well, I just set up the demo before recording. So this is a very weird looking and simplified example, but only two queries. So this is not a re realistic view of the query store. But what you in this case see is that there is a query that has a rather high total duration. And on the in the right pane, you can see that there are four different execution plans. You can also see whenever I click one of the buttons, the execution plan below actually changes. So it's four different execution plans. That's already weird. And if I look at hover one of those uh, execution plans, you will also see, and you will see the same for each other execution plan, that the minimum duration and the maximum duration are quite far apart, which matches the complaint we had of our users of erratic query performance. Sometimes it returns fast, sometimes it returns slow. And when I check all the four execution plans that are available in the query store right now, I will see that all four of them have both very fast and very slow execution. So there is not a single execution plan that is always fast enough. Now, when I see erratic query performance, I always want to rule out whether it's bad parameter sniffing. That is quite often the root cause for this specific issue of unpredictable changes in performance. And one way to verify whether we have parameter sniffing is to look at the top left operator, go to the property screen. I'm going to put it in the middle of the screen now so that you can see it better. And I'll make it a bit bigger. And then there is a parameter list. And we see here that the store procedure has seven parameters. And if I look at one of the execution plans, you will see that this execution plan, let's just expand all seven quickly and then we can I need to scroll, click correct and not next to the plus. So if I expand all seven, you can see that this execution plan was 
uh, compiled for sales order ID equals 43729. Order month is null, ship month is null, customer ID, well, the rest is all null. If I look at execution plan number four, for example, then if you go to the parameter list and expand them all, let's quickly click them all again and, screw, uh, and look, now you will see that here sales order ID was null, order month and ship month also, but customer ID has a value. And if you look at the other execution plans, you will see that all of them have this same pattern that one or two parameters had a value and the rest were null. So we already see that based on the parameters used to compile the execution plan, we get different execution plans. That is a red flag for possible bad performance, uh, bad parameter sniffing. So let's look at the store procedure. And uh, it has a bunch of parameters. I'm going to use uh, a SQL prompt here to provide some uh, parameters. Let's just put in some value. Uh, what other parameters do we have? We have a product ID, let's see if it's 104. We have um, sales order ID is 234. We have customer ID is 54. We have ship month is, and I happen to know, I saw that before that this is, uh, a weird way to put it, but it's year and month as a character string. And then we also have order month and let's do the same there. And I think we also had a salesperson ID. I, I didn't give that yet. And now let's reformat that, I think. Um, so that's easier. And now let's execute this. Uh, no data comes back because I just put some random data there. There may be, uh, no, maybe the product ID doesn't even exist. I forgot to enable the execution plan. Let's execute it again. Let's look at the execution plan. And uh, I see a single execution plan. It starts with a hash match and that's weird because this slow query we had here is an insert into sales orders. Whatever execution plan I select, you see on the top left that there's a clustered index insert. You can also see here, let's bring this up, that it's an insert into statement. But here we have a select statement. There is, there is no insert into. So was I looking at the wrong store procedure? Is this query not coming from the sales orders? from the search orders uh, stop procedure. Um, well, maybe I should have looked at the query text first. It's always good to start with the query text of a store procedure. And I did it in this case, but let's look and you will see that there is a step, a step that is skipped. It says so in the comments, but I can also read it here. This step, step I cannot pronounce English words anymore. This step is skipped when the sales order ID is given. And in my example here, I had given the sales order ID. So this step was skipped. What this store procedure does is when sales order ID is not given, then it uses all the other parameters to find a bunch of data, either by looking for customer IDs equal to that value or by using all if customer IDs. So this is a fairly standard pattern you will see for all those store procedures that can search on various optional search parameters. We have to search for equality on the customer ID, or if customer ID is not given, we don't care about the customer ID. There are different ways to phrase this, but they all have basically the same effect. And the results here are put in a temporary, in a table variable. So we store all the sales order IDs but if the sales order ID was already pa passed in a single value, then we can skip this because we already know what sales already. And then in the end, there's a second query that either returns data that is equal to the given sales order ID, or it returns data where the sales order ID is in the list we just created. So apparently the problem query is this first query. This is the one that's causing the issues. And with my test, I skipped it because I had this. Well, I can of course just remove this, but what I did instead was I went to the users and I said, give me an example of a recent 
a, 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 a execution where we had a problems. I'm going to execute this query now. And once it returns, you will see that it gives one of the execution plans. So there is a first execution plan and the second with the hash match. The second one was not the problem. The first one with the insert in two. Here we see one of the execution plans that we just saw in the query store output. And here we see if we, for instance, go to the far right, that there is indeed a problem because on the sales order header, we had an estimated number of rows of just one and a real number of rows of 31,000. So this big difference causes a bad join strategy where we have 31,000 key lookups. That is not effective. We should have used a different index or a scan or something else. But this plan was optimized for other search parameters. And we can also verify that by once more going to the top left operator and looking at this parameter list here. And now you will see that if I just uh, look at one of these, uh, uh, let's just expand them all again, that's easier. If I look here, now you will see that for all of them, we have not only a compile value, but also a runtime value. And we'll see that for instance, this plan was compiled for customer ID is known, but when we execute it, we didn't pass in a customer ID. We passed in a ship month, but we compiled a plan for ship month is not known. So the plan will still produce the correct results, but it's not optimized for this specific combination of parameters. Now to double check, let's see what effect this has. So I'm going to use the same execution, but now with statistics IO on. And if I execute it and look at the statistics, you will see, for instance, here that there's 94,000 logical reads on sales order header. And that's a high number. And that's what makes this query slow on this execution. So let's find the plan handle for this specific query. And then we can copy it and paste it here. And then we remove this single plan from the procedure cache. This is a far more pointed way to remove a plan from the cache than the blunt force of just dropping everything from the procedure cache. And now I'm going to execute the exact same query again, but because there's now nothing in the procedure cache, we will get a new compilation. And if I look now at the parameter list, you will see that all of these, the compile time value and the runtime value are the same because the plan has been compiled for this bunch of parameters, which of course gives us a good performance. Whoops, I want it here. But this doesn't fix everything because now the plan, oh wait, before I execute that, let's look at the messages and indeed all the high IOs are now gone. We don't have high IOs anymore. This is the highest number and that's in the second query. But now if someone else uses the search screen to find orders for atoms, they will have a slow plan because now they will have lots of IOs on person and customer because this is still the execution plan that was optimized for product ID 709 in ship month, February 2012. So yes, we have confirmed by looking at the query store and at the execution plans and at, at the parameter list specifically, also at how the plans operate for each uh, combination of parameters, we have confirmed that this is a case of bad parameter sniffing. Now I call it bad parameter sniffing, not parameter sniffing. Parameter sniffing in itself is often a good thing but sometimes it backfires. And the cases where it backfires are notably, if you have a search on a, a column that has a very skewed data distribution. So you have a store procedure that searches for customers in a certain city, and you have 10 million customers in New York, and you have 30 customers in a Nowhereville. Then if, the plan cache is clear, the server has just been restarted, and the first user searches for Nowhereville, you will get an execution plan optimized for 30 customers, 
the next user searches for New York and they will try to process 10 million customers with this execution plan optimized for 30 customers. That's never going to work. So this skewed data distribution is one reason why you sometimes have bad parameter sniffing. Another common issue, uh, common cause for bad parameter sniffing is an execution plan that for instance does a range. You have a report that uh, gives you all the sales since a specific date and most of the time it's used to get all the sales of the current week. But sometimes a manager wants to dig deeper and asks for the current month, the current year or even the current decade. Here again, whatever parameter happens to be the first when the plan cache is empty, that is the one that is used to come up with the best possible execution plan for that parameter, and that is then reused when different parameters are passed in. And the third common case where you can have bad parameter sniffing is this specific case that we had here. If you have multiple parameters in your store procedure that are optional, because SQL Server will create a single execution plan for the set of parameters that it sees on the first execution. But the next execution will have different parameters, which results in a different execution plan. So there are multiple ways you can approach a situation where you have bad parameter sniffing. And the first I always look at is this one, to add option recompile to the query. Not all experts agree that this should be the number one. Let me put it out straight. And I'm not saying I am right and they are wrong. It's a matter of taste. It's also a matter of what kind of environment do you work in. So if you add an option recompile to the query, then you will never reuse an old plan. You will always, whenever the query executes, have the optimizer compile a new execution plan that is optimal for the parameters that you have at that time. So you never have bad performance due to a plan that was made for other parameters. That's the good thing. The bad thing is that you always have the overhead of this compilation. Now if your store procedure runs a few times per hour, or even a few times per minute, that's okay. If your store procedure runs a thousand times per second, that's probably not okay. So really, if you consider this, and again, it's the easiest option, it works in almost all cases, it is the least amount of work, but you do need to verify how much compilation overhead you are adding to your server. If this is a store procedure or some other parameterized SQL that runs all the time, hundreds of times per minute or even per second, then the compilation overhead will totally kill your server. And then this is not a good idea. A second idea is to add an option like optimize for a known or even optimize for and then specific values for each of the parameters. This will give you always the same execution plan as long as nothing else nothing else in your system changes. So it gives you a con consistent execution. Especially when you have a very skewed data distribution, this can be a very good way to not get optimal performance in all cases, but get acceptable performance in all cases. And this is really a method I like in those cases of skewed data distribution. That was not the issue we have today. So I'm not going to use that now. Then if you have, and this is, very, uh, this is an option that is specifically very useful with all those optional parameters, but it can also be used in the case of a skewed data uh, uh, distribution, use separate store procedures. So for instance, if you have a simpler version of find orders when you have two optional parameters, you could create four specialized sub procedure, one for both are uh, null, one for the first is null, one for the second is null, and one for they are neither are null, they are both given. Then you get four different execution plans because each of those store procedure gets its own execution plan, but the store procedure that only runs when product ID is given and ship month is not, will always have a store procedure for, ship month, for product ID is given and ship month is not. 
So that's your, uh, the execution plan for that store procedure will always be optimal for the parameters it is called with. And it will never be called with a different set of parameters because the upper level store procedure distributes the calls to the correct set procedures. Now, this can also be used in the case of a skewed data distribution. If you know that all of your searches on all cities always have the same execution plan that is okay, except the one for New York and the one for Washington DC, because those are your biggest cities, then you could create two versions of the store procedure, one to search for Washington DC and New York, and a second to search for all the rest of the cities. The code might even be the same, so you have two identical copies, and then you have an upper layer store procedure that, depending on the city passed in, calls one of the two. And the version for New York or Washington DC, we don't care which of the two gets sniffed because it always gives you the execution plan for a city with a lot of customers. And the other store procedure with, for all the other cities, we again don't call which city gets sniffed because we always get the execution plan that is ideal for a low amount of customers. This trick to do separate store procedures might be interesting here for our find orders case, except that we have seven store procedures and all uh, seven parameters, and all of them are optional. So that means that we have two to the power of seven different combinations. That's a lot. And I really don't want two to the power of seven. That is uh, 128, if I do the math correct in my head. I don't want to create 128 store procedures by hand because I also will have to maintain them going forward if there is a functional change. So purely from a management perspective, this is a terrible idea. Now, it could, of course, be possible that there are three or four combinations of uh, search arguments that are very often used. And I could say for the four use cases that compromise 99% of the actual usage of this, this store procedure, I'm going to create four specialized store procedures so that those four typical use cases get optimal performance and all the rest get the default performance with the risk of bad parameter sniffing. But because it's only 1% of the total usage of the store procedure, that's an acceptable price. So this is a consideration I might make. In this case, though, I'm going to assume that this store procedure runs too often to use option 1, option recompile. The use cases are all equally important. There is not a, uh, not a way to say, oh, 2 or 3 of the 128 theoretical cases are really what we normally use. We need to be optimal in all cases. That's when we can start to use dynamic SQL. Now, it is important. Dynamic SQL has a bad name, and for good reason. That's because dynamic SQL is often used incorrectly. As soon as anyone puts any user input into a query string, you are exposing your system to possible SQL injection. And this is such a common vulnerability of so many systems that hackers will always try whether your system is vulnerable to SQL injection. So make sure not to make that mistake. Everything that is typed in by a user has to remain a parameter passed into the query with SP execute SQL. Everything in the SQL query string has to come from your code. And if that means that you have to type in your code, if user entered table name is product, then quote, product, quote, then you are going to type that. And you are not going to concatenate the field that has the username. Probably you shouldn't let the user type a, ta a table name anyway. So what we are going to do is we're going to mostly use dynamic SQL. We're going to create one specific uh, case for the sales order ID is given because that is completely a different case. So first I'm going to create a specialized store procedure for when sales order ID is given. Remember that was the case where we simply skipped the if and we only did the last part. So I'm 
going to create a special store procedure for that that only has the sales order ID as the parameter. It's no longer an optional parameter. It has to be there. And the where clause is simplified to simply, it has to be this. Drop and create it. The second store procedure is more exciting. That's the dynamic search for the remaining six parameters. And those six parameters are still optional parameters because this is a single store procedure. And now I'm going to show you what I mean when I say all the query text has to be hard coded. So I'm going to create a temporary table, not a table variable. That's simply a restriction of dynamic SQL because it's a new execution context. Table variables are not visible there. Uh, temporary tables are visible if they are created outside of the uh, dynamic SQL. So I'm to create it in a temporary table. And here I start with the fixed part of the query. And this is, sim this is simply a convenience thi thing where one equals one. The reason I do that is because then I don't have to figure out whether the first line has to start with where or end, because all of the rest of the lines may or may not be there. So what I'm going to do is I start with the hard-coded part of the query. Then if the order month is passed in, if it's not a null, then I'm going to add and, and this is simply a copy paste from the original code, but you will notice that I hard code add order month here as the text in the query string. I do not concatenate the value of the order month parameter. I do the same for all those other parameters. And remember, I only add the specific query text if the value is not null, but I never concatenate the value. I only uh, have a reference to it in the added text. And then at the end, I'm going to use SP Execute SQL with this query, with all the parameters. Some of them might not be used in the query. If I didn't paste in this part, then customer last name is not in the query. I can still pass it in. That's legal. I'm going to give all the values. So all the parameter values are still parameter values. They are not concatenated in the query string. And we are completely safe from every possible SQL injection. Because we execute the query that stores things in the temporary table, we can then use that temporary table here. And this is the same as the final part of the original query, of the original store procedure. So let's create this store procedure too. And then, of course, we have two specialized store procedures. One for sales order ID is given, one for sales order ID is not given. Now we have to replace the original find orders with a new version that calls either the dynamic search version or search by sales order ID. So let's also drop and create this version of the store procedure. And now there's just a bunch of execution plans and a bunch of uh, 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 sample versions. And if I execute them all five, maybe I shouldn't have done that in a single batch. Maybe that's a bad idea. Let's just do one first. The one with sales order ID given. Well, that of course goes to the store procedure that is specialized there for, for sales order ID is given. And this is a very effective way to do it. Very low number of logical reads. This is the one that uses dynamic SQL based on order month and ship month. And I get a query that is optimized for that. You see that the number of logical reads is higher than if you give a specific sales order ID, but none of the numbers are more than 2000. So this is fairly fast. And in the execution plan, you will see that the execution plan we have is indeed optimized for ship month and order month. And the values, the compiled value and the runtime value match what was passed in versus what was it was compiled for. I can do the same with all other queries and all of them get an execution plan that is optimized for the specific set of parameters that is there. Now, this seems to be similar to option recompile, but remember, option recompile recompiles on every use. This one doesn't recompile on every use. We already had an execution where salesperson ID and customer last name were given. So if we now execute again with a different value for the tool, with the same two parameters given, and I execute, then you will get the same execution plan as before. We didn't check the one before, but trust me, it is the same. And if you look at 
the uh, parameter list, you will see that this was compiled for 281, but the runtime value is 279, and the same for the customer last name. So this means that if we have serious data skew in our data distribution, we still can suffer from that problem. Basically, because we have dynamic SQL now for a store procedure with six optional parameters, the system will automatically create the queries, but there's only 64 possible queries it can create. So at most, 64 entries in the plan cache will be created, and then they will be reused. We will not get endless recompiles if the same parameters are used, even with different values, but the same are null or not null, we will reuse the execution plan. So now we have good enough performance for each of the use cases without having a recompile on every execution. If this executes a thousand times per minute, then we will have all 64 possible execution plans in the plan cache within two or three minutes, and then they will all be reused. And we, they will all be optimal for that set of parameters. And if you still have issues, then it's probably data skew, and we will have to do something about those specific cases. That's for later. Now, like in the previous uh, videos I made in this series, I didn't fix everything. One thing I really hate is how SQL Server, how this code handles passing in the month as year month. Passing it in that way isn't the bad thing. The bad thing is, let's scroll up and show you, this is the bad thing. This make, means that an index on order date or on ship date will not be used. This means that a lot of overhead will be done. And this is definitely a place where I would want to change this to use the, uh, the past in order month to compute the first day and the last day, the first day of the month and the first day of the next month. And then in a query filter on order date larger than or equal first day of the month and order date is less than the first day of the next month. And the same for ship date. And that will definitely improve my performance more. But for now, I don't have to do that. Like in the previous examples, if you are always busy, if you have a backlog of 20 tickets that are all urgent and that all need to be addressed, then this is something to put in the backlog and not to do right now, because there are more urgent matters that you need to do first. But I would definitely make a note that there is potential for improvement left in this store procedure. Maybe we don't even need to use the temporary table. Maybe we can collapse everything into a single query. That would probably also save a lot of work because I actually access the same table in two queries now. That is not effective. But what we did is fix this erratic performance issue without causing too many recompiles at, as I would have done with option recompile. Again, if the number of times this store procedure is called is low enough, then option recompile would have been, in my opinion, the better solution. So we fix this and that ends this video. If you want to know more, if you work with execution plans and you want information on a specific property or a specific operator, you can usually find that at the execution plan reference, sqlserverfast.com slash EPR for execution plan reference. Completely free, it is a complete documentation on almost all operators. It's still in process of being built, I'm still adding pages every month but we will get there eventually and you will find everything about all the operators there. If you want to learn more about execution plan, if you want to have very in-depth, complete, high quality training, consider going uh, to sqlserverfast.com slash video and buy access to the execution plan video training where I provide huge amounts of information and training about how to read execution plans. If you have questions, you can always mail me or tweet me, or of course, you can leave a comment below with your question and I will try to answer. You can also leave a comment with your feedback, especially if you like this video. I 
prefer to hear it. If you think I could do something better, also use the comments or the other feedback ways to let me know. Of course, there's also the like button that I always enjoy if you press it. And you can click subscribe so that you will automatically get an email whenever I publish a new video. For now, this is Hugo Canelis. I love execution plans. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.